Hi everyone, and welcome to Enterprise NG. It's been almost 12 years since the first enterprise application was written with Angular. The year was 2010, and the application was called Google Feedback. It was an internal tool for managing and handling all the incoming user feedback across applications at Google. Angular was different back then. We called it AngularJS instead of Angular. Instead of TypeScript, we were using JavaScript. The APIs looked different as well. And everything was kind of immature, lacking in features, and far from being enterprise ready. We were not the champions that were expected to make it. The competition was fierce, both in the open source community, with many great JavaScript frameworks and libraries out there, as well as internally at Google, where Angular was clearly an underdog and for the longest time not taken seriously. But we held to our beliefs and were determined to make Angular into a solution that would enable the creation of web applications that users love to use, applications that are created by developers that love to build them, and do it all with a community where everyone feels welcome. In spite of these humble beginnings, Angular has grown, and grown a lot. Angular is now the most preferred enterprise solution for building web applications. And many of you joining us today came from enterprises all around the world, where you built some of the biggest and the most business critical applications across travel, hospitality, healthcare, manufacturing, finance, and many other industries. At Google, we've reached some major milestones recently as well. Angular's growth has accelerated, and with over 2,500 applications and thousands of Googlers using it, Angular became the most used web solution at Google across all categories that we currently track. Back in October, Angular Ivy was fully rolled out at Google, and the impact at Google scale has been staggering. Developers feel more productive, with edit refresh latency dropping by over 30%, and production builds completing in less than half the time, all while resulting in applications that are often as much as 30% smaller. Most of you have been enjoying these benefits already for quite some time, because Ivy partially launched in the open source community with Angular version 9 a year and a half ago. But only a few weeks ago, we've completed this open source rollout. And as of Angular version 13, everything, including Angular libraries shipped to NPM, are now taking full advantage of Ivy. The main goal of Ivy has been to rebuild Angular's foundations to improve user and developer experiences and make Angular more flexible. We fixed many long-standing bugs along the way, but also started building on top of these new capabilities and already delivered API improvements, as well as entirely new ways to debug, profile, and observe your Angular applications with Angular DevTools, a browser extension that we launched earlier this year. Now I'd like to invite my friend and colleague, Mark Thompson, to join me and tell you more about all of the goodies that we've recently released in Angular version 13. Igor, thanks so much. I really appreciate that energy. Hey friends, I'm Mark from the Angular team and I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. Igor just opened our conversation, giving us some insights about Angular at Google. And I'm gonna give you some insights about what's new in version 13. Are you ready? Let's dive in. I don't know if we can say it enough, but we love the Angular community. And what's more is that we appreciate all of the excellent contributions. Now, while there were many great contributions from the community, I'm just going to mention a few, but remember, we value them all. If you work with Angular Forms a lot and you've wished to have had more control over validation, then for this next one, you can thank Nirmal. Thanks to his contribution, developers can now enable and disable validators dynamically. Next up, we have Ahmed coming through with a contribution to Angular's router. Now, this added the option to restore history after canceled navigation. The final contribution that I wanna call out is from Maxi who updated the service worker APIs for check for update and activate update to make things a bit more ergonomic. Before, when using those APIs, there was no information available about the outcome of those tasks. Now, the Activate API returns a Boolean promise that resolves to true if the update was activated and false if it wasn't. We also see a similar change for Check Update. As I said before, these are just a few of the contributions that were included in this release. And remember, we make Angular better together, so please continue contributing. 
We've improved the way we do testing to make sure things are smoother. We've improved the test bed via environment teardown to create faster, less memory intensive tests, stop DOM elements from bleeding into other tests and to do better about cleaning up providers. You can enable this feature through the teardown destroy after each option within a knit test environment for the entire suite or for a specific suite with configure testing module. The view container ref create component API has been updated to make dynamic component creation simpler. Let me explain. We simplified this API such that developers can now create components using the component class instead of having to resolve and pass the component factory. Yeah, we know this is much smoother. We hope that you enjoy. We're all Ivy all the time as a V13. With view engine support gone, this unblocks the path for new features. And this means no more NGCC in the future. And for you, that's faster build times. And while we're saying goodbye to View Engine, be sure to wave goodbye to IE11 support while you're at it. We no longer support IE11, and this is great news for Angular, as it allows us to focus on modern browser APIs, remove polyfills, and more. NG Update will automatically remove polyfill, so we got you covered there. If you still need to support IE11 for your enterprise, keep in mind that Angular version 12 supports IE11 and will be supported under our LTS through November 2022. The Angular package format, or APF, has been streamlined and modernized. Version 13 now ships ES2020 code, and we've removed older output formats, including view engine-specific metadata to make the NPM packages lighter. Want to know what else is cool? We've also updated the APF to support node package exports. And this helps developers avoid inadvertently relying on internal APIs that may change. We're always trying to make tooling better and better for developers. So let's take a moment to look at some ways that we're doing just that. Even though it's been around since V12, we've updated the CLI to support persistent build cache by default. Now we've seen some code build times have improvements of up to 68% because of this feature. After observing major build time improvements in V12, thanks to the introduction of ES Build to our pipeline, in V13, we've expanded the use of ES Build to include global scripts and CSS optimizations, delivering further build speed gains. Here are two important version updates for Angular. We support TypeScript version 4.4, which comes with some really cool new features. Developers can take advantage of features such as the exact optional property types flag that prevents undefined from being a value for an optional property. It also supports an upcoming ECMAScript feature that allows for static blocks. And of course, there's everyone's favorite performance improvements for TypeScript. We've also enabled RxJS 7.4 support, and it features some great improvements and refinements. Many APIs have been updated, so it's worth checking out the six to seven change summary on rxjs.dev to learn more about what's available. Components are getting more awesome in V13. We've put in significant effort to improve components so that they reach a higher standard for accessibility. We've updated touch targets on multiple components like checkboxes and radio buttons. We've improved high contrast mode for components, and we've done more work like updating the documentation as, as well. Our goal is to continue to move components and Angular forward in accessibility and help developers build accessible applications to serve all of our users. All right, friends, that's it for me, but be sure to check out talks from our other Angular team members, including Emma, Minko and Alex. Also, there's a great talk about trusted types that you don't want to miss. Now that you know what's new in Angular, you may want to know where Angular is going. Hey, Igor, let's let the people know what's on the horizon. Wow, I love Mark's energy. Thank you, Mark, for covering all the recent improvements. Now let's take a look at what the team is excited about for 2022 and beyond. I'd like to highlight three major areas that you'll see us focusing on next year. Number one, making Angular simpler and more flexible with standalone components, directives, and pipes. I'm personally excited the most about this one because it will fundamentally change Angular, enable simpler getting started journeys, less boilerplate for common coding patterns, and more flexibility overall, all while being fully backwards compatible with the existing ecosystem. If you would like to know more, please check out all of the details and excellent discussion 
on our public RFC for this feature. Number two, we want to capitalize on the solid IB foundations and improve ergonomics of many core APIs of the framework. If you ever wondered why we still need APIs like Component Factory, Component Factory Resolver, and many other APIs that make Angular more complicated than necessary, then I hope you will be delighted to learn that thanks to IB, we no longer need these APIs and we'll be gradually removing them from the framework. And with ng update and our focus on stability, many of these changes will be delivered to applications via safe and automated migrations over the next few major releases. Number three, since we want Angular to reach as many users as possible, we'll be focusing even more on accessibility in our CDK and material components, but also in the core of the framework. This is a big priority for us internally at Google, and anyone using Angular will receive these benefits as well. We have many more projects in the pipeline for the future, some focused on giving developers more flexibility, like the Template Composition API, which aims to make it possible to create even more dynamic and richer user interfaces, as well as projects aimed at making development with Angular faster and more productive. You'll see us talk about these projects as we get closer to focusing on them. But please do keep in mind that you get the most out of Angular by staying up to date with the latest releases. So we ask you to keep up with our six months release cycle and budget a fraction of your time for updates. In exchange, we promise to you that we make these updates as smooth as possible, reliable, and worth your effort. Angular might have started as an experiment in Google in 2010, but over the last decade, it has become one of the most reliable and productive ways to build web applications at Google and enterprises around the world. And it only keeps on getting better. We could not be here today without you being part of this journey. And for that, I just want to say thank you.